In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at six identical insignias picked up from the recycle shop. These were from some sort of furnished living facilities, and that's why they all happen to get six identical TVs in. I took a quick look at them, uh, just in the initial testing. Three of them have image but no backlight. One of them is stuck in standby, so it might be a mainboard issue or a power supply issue. And two of them have broken glass, so might need these for parts, might not. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to start with the one that is stuck in standby. That should be the easiest to fix. So here I'll plug it in. We get the red standby light, but nothing when I push the buttons. And the buttons feel fine. They got a nice click to them, so I don't suspect any like physical damage to them so next let's just get this back off and take a closer look I have a spare main board left over from the last time they got a bunch of these in. So just gonna see if see if this main board will come out of standby. I only need the power supply and buttons. I don't need to hook up the T-Con and I don't need to hook up the speakers. So here I just plug the power in. Here's the, oh, the backlight's on. Backlight is on. That is That's a good sign. Let me uh, switch out main boards. Should power up. I have a flashing. There we go. Look at that. Picture and image. Okay. That's one down. I suppose. With the original main board. Maybe it had a failed EEPROM. That wouldn't surprise me. Alright, the next one I'm going to tackle is the one with bad glass. I'll just show you what it does. Come on, there we go. Yep. You see we have a impact. Something hit it right there and just kind of screwed up the whole thing. So let me get this glass off of here. Here I've switched out the uh, glass with the uh, LED frame. So this is now the frame with the good LEDs and I'm going to lay the good glass on this one. Alright, it's 
very important you make sure the glass is sitting in the stops. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time, like right here. It's not, when you put the other frame on, it's going to break the glass. So I have to get this glass scooted over just a little bit. So I got the new glass laying down. Let me do a test before I go any further. Got a flashing stab on and just a blank white screen. Hmm. I think I might have to switch out the uh, T-Con. All right, I just switched out the T-Con. And if we take a peek under there, yep, we got a good image. No more white screen. All right, another one done. Now the next two that I have have bad backlights and I'll show you how I know that. So you turn it on, you get the flashing standby light. Try that again. Turn it on. There, flashing standby light, so it tells me it's starting to boot up. And if you take a bright flashlight, you can see an image uh, pretty soon we'll get the no signal detected message to pop up there. If you look close, you can see the uh, the letters there of the no signal message. So I know it has image, so we know power supply is, well, we could assume the power supply is good. We know the main board's working, TCON's working, the screen is so far apparently fine. It's just a matter of uh, making the bat light, backlight come on again, so I'm going to pull this panel off and look for some uh, bad LEDs. Now to get down to the LEDs, I followed the same procedure I just did to remove the glass, but I also have to remove these side uh, clip trim pieces here. These are just have several clips on them that you have to unclip. And then I just pull up all the layers. I usually try to grab them all in one shot. There's the LEDs. Now with everything out of the way, I can test the strips individually and see which is the failed strip. Uh, right here I can back pin with my uh, power supply. I have my meter leads tied into my power supply. I'm such approximately a little over 3 volts per LED. Now the important thing is that I have the current limited to 100 milliamps, so that way if something does terribly go wrong, I won't damage the LEDs that are good. Okay, it looks like it's strip number five from this side. Okay, so it looks like we have a failed LED somewhere on this strip. Here's a strip I scavenged out of a different TV, and it's good. I'm going to go ahead and install this. That little tabs and dots that all line up to click it into place. Okay. It's plugged in. Let's see if this tape is going good. This 
just hold the layers out of the way. And then we'll lay that back down. Now I'm going to plug it in. We'll see if we can get this into light. Hit the power button here. There we go. All right. So I do see every single LED is now lit up. Now with this model of TV, it has a reputation of having bad LEDs. So if you do not want to do this process all over again, replace all of the strips with new strips. And uh, hopefully you can find something that has maybe upgraded. Let's see if I can spin this the right way. These kind of lock into place here. Uh, see if you can find some upgraded strips that are better than the originals. I think on the next TV, I have one left with failed LEDs on that one. I am going to um, see how much current it is pulling uh, during normal operation and on startup. With these LCD trim pieces, you want to start at the tops and bottoms first. There's little tabs here that have to go underneath the side trim plastic. So you really want to make sure all these clips are in all the way and that this uh, rubber edge here is flat all the way across if there's any areas where it didn't clip right and if it's sticking up you'll end up breaking your glass so you really want to take this step and just make sure that uh, it is tight all the way across all right now to give this thing a test before i go too far. When you get TVs with bad LEDs, eh, you can never really, never really trust them. Uh, like I said before, smartest thing to do is replace all of them. So do as I say, not as I do. And here we've got another, another one working, another one down. So one left to go. And on that one, I think I'm going to take a little closer look at uh, the current failed LEDs. All right. So I found the open LED strip number four, first one in. I'm going to use my current meter to close the circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the max hold function on the meter to keep the highest current rating spike uh, to hold it on screen. So I'm going to hit the power button. It should kick on in a second. There. Uh, 430 milliamps was the highest it went to. Uh, let me take it off the max function now. And so I'll just read it. We'll be reading live data, the live current draw. So 430 milliamps. Uh, if you can see the whole screen here, we do have a couple of shorted LEDs. A couple on that end, one over here, one over here. So we have one open and it looks like three shorted LEDs. 430 milliamps seems a little high. I, I don't know what the specs are on these LEDs, but I'm kind of surprised to see over 300. So this might not be a bad idea to turn the brightness down on this one probably pushing these LEDs pretty hard at 430 milliamps. All right, let me replace some of these bad strips. Final TV has all the bad strips switched out. I'm just gonna let this thing run for a little while. Now with them all back together, so I got four of them working. Uh, unfortunately, two of them had broken glass, so I can't do anything about that. One had the bad T-con that was given the white screen. One wouldn't uh, respond to the power button. It was stuck in standby. That was the main board. And two of them had failed LEDs. Well, I think that uh, wraps up this video. See you next time.